I'm always prepared for um, abrupt changes. It's kind of the whole idea of being prepared to be unprepared. You've kind of got as many ducks uh, in a row as you could possibly uh, put in terms of uh, pre-planning, but once you're down on the floor ready to do it, um, you're ready to find more ducks. Um, or it's like those logs on the, uh, on the river. I mean, once one starts to sink, you have to jump onto the next one. Preparator, as far as I can tell, comes from the sort of the traditional museum um, uh, tasks where you would prepare specimens. So you were, you were taxidermy, you were mounting um, animals and plant specimens, so you're preparing these specimens for exhibition and display in, in the sort of the museum setting. So that's my understanding, one way or the other. In terms of contemporary art, uh, preparator really is somebody who will take um, the idea of the exhibition. Um, so the curator may come uh, to the preparatory, you work as a team, and you have a, an artist or a group of artists you're working with. Um, this is what the proposed exhibition is going to be. This is the way we'd like to display it. Um, the preparator's job is to take that information and uh, turn it into reality, I mean, to produce the exhibition. <music> I think I describe myself fundamentally as a maker. I make things, um, whether they're aesthetically pleasing things or functional things or things for other people or things for myself um, is less relevant than the fact that I'm making them. Um, and also I'm a kind of a lifelong learner. So being able to combine those sort of things. So what I do here sort of fits right into that um, in terms of sort of whatever that, that um, career line might be. Um, but it doesn't negate the fact that I'm still also uh, a practicing artist as much as I can be. Whenever anybody declares themselves an expert, in my mind, they've now simply shut themselves off to any new knowledge or opportunity. So. Um, I hope never to be an expert because I always want to be open to the, the new, um, to be always learning. Um, so to be incompetent and skilled is, uh, to me is something that's different than so-called expert expertise or being an expert. So um, that attitude and that approach, I mean, it goes into life as well as, as, as being a lifelong learner, uh, constantly learning, uh, constantly being challenged and, and being up to those challenges to be able to respond to them. Um, in an active way um, means being completely open to what's what's out there. Working with artists and curators and the differences between working with them, I don't know if it has so much to do with the role as to whether they're an artist or curator as to whether there's a difference uh, working with them. It has more to do with, to, to do with working with personalities. Um, in some cases the artists are the curators in some respects, right? They're curating their own show, um, or there's a certain level of intervention or, or control on their part in that regard. Working with the in-house curators here, um, for me, it's a known quantity. So we, we've developed our own sort of rapport and responses, um, so we know how that goes. When we have other curators coming in, um, then we have to kind of feel that out. Quite often, the in-house curators have been uh, working with these people um, before I've ever had contact with them. Quite often I find working with artists, um, they're visual artists. They're not um, always skilled at communicating verbally what it is that they're trying to articulate. 
So trying to feel that out um, in a nonverbal, or it has to be in a real way to begin with, I guess, but trying to build that sense of what it is that they're trying to achieve, looking at what they've done in the past, what it is that they're trying to achieve in whatever exhibition we're being putting up, that's being put on at the time. For me, space is very much part of my language. Um, as uh, an artist who's always worked in, in three dimensions, um, spatial reasoning for me is always, I remember, I think it was a high school test or something, I, I rated kind of the highest in spatial reasoning. At the time, I had no idea really what that entailed or what that meant, um, but it stood me well in that regard. Um, so that, that idea of articulating a language of the sort of space for me resonates. Um, because I can see that, I can see it in my head, I can understand those sort of things. Uh, for me, it's always a, been one of the challenges that I'm up against is helping other people to understand what it is that I'm seeing in my head and uh, translating that into um, language that they can understand, which uh, quite often I'm um, ending up building maquettes and models to help other people understand that language. So maybe in a miniature scale, but it helps translate that, uh, what it is that I'm thinking or considering, or some of the issues I see. So quite often um, uh, people come to me saying, well, this is what we want to do. And I can see in my head what the problems are going to be in terms of how that space is going to work or not work. In terms of what is the skills and backgrounds um, that you need to be a preparator, it's, it's kind of all over the map in a lot of ways. Um, I think um, patience um, and good communication skills are probably topmost. Um, it's very useful and handy to have any number of um, makers skills in terms of mine happens to be working with wood and whatnot. Uh, but again, because we're dealing with technology, um, having some, some um, background um, in those sort of particular um, areas are helpful. I think in terms of being a lead preparator, overseeing everything, uh, probably the greatest skill would be to uh, learn how to delegate and find um, you're not going to be able to ever have all the skills required um, and all the needs. So being skillful at sourcing those. Um, I think I'm very fortunate in this particular institution that I work with a fabulous group of people too. So it's just nice to be able to come in to a group of people that you work very well with. And also it's always been important for me to be able to, I've been very fortunate in terms of learning a lot of skills um, through my lifetime, um, had a, a lot of fabulous mentors. And it's something that's very important to me is to be able to pass that on. So to being, bring in um, other not always artists, but other people, um, and to be able to kind of impart that information, um, to be able to um, kind of have it carry on, um, and being able to see them kind of come along and um, actually um, come up to the, the same sort of level and even surpass. Um, that there's a joy in, in having people come up with all these wonderful, weird and wonderful new approaches to, to building, making, or to put on an exhibition as well. What sort of advice would I give to emerging art preparators? Attitude. I mean, attitude is huge for all these sort of things. And that probably translates almost in any sort of profession and whatnot. Um, but if you don't have the right attitude, um, and it's not a matter of being kind of a good person, bad person. It, it's more of, of being um, open to change, open to um, rude and abrupt changes sometimes, and being able to handle that with dignity. Um, and uh, just being having a very calm approach to things as well too so i don't know if that's advice or not but i think it's it's an absolute necessity in terms of being able to pull off um, this kind of work mm -hmm.